Hello everyone. Welcome to part four of this guide for paper five, question two, A-level physics. In this part, what we are going to discuss is all the rules regarding uncertainties, specifically the uncertainties that you have to calculate in part B of the question two, where you are given a table. And in that table, you have to calculate certain quantities to correct number of significant figures, something that we learned in the previous video. And now what we are going to learn is how to find out the absolute uncertainties in those uh, quantities in those columns so not only do we need to know how to calculate them but also uh, how to write them down so let's see how it's done and let's jump into the screen so we will start with examples that involve multiplication and division and where you have you are given an absolute uncertainty and then you also have to calculate uh, calculate an uncertainty in your answer as well in this first example you are given a value of L which is 40.0 and the uncertainty in that is plus minus 0.5 meters. Now you have to find 1 over L and then you have to calculate the uncertainty in 1 over L as well. Now method 1 of doing that is that the percentage uncertainty in my calculated value will be equal to the sum of percentage uncertainties in the raw values so we only have one raw value to work with which is l let's first find out the value of 1 over l here so 1 over 40.0 and we put that in our calculator we'll get 0 0.250 per meter now let's find the percentage uncertainty for our raw value which is the percentage uncertainty in l so that would be 0 0.5 over 40.0 times 100 and that turns out to be 1.25%. Now the percentage uncertainty as given by the rule in the, in the calculated value which is 1 over L will also be 1.25%. So if we know that then we can calculate the absolute uncertainty in 1 over L from its percentage uncertainty. What would be 1.25% of 0 0.0250? 0 0.0250 multiplied by 1.25 over 100 should give you 0 0.0003125. However, you need to have a proper way of writing down the absolute uncertainty in your answer. So first write down your answer to an appropriate number of significant figures, something that we learned in the previous video. So we will write uh, the value of one over L to three significant figures. Now look at the last decimal place in your answer. It's the fourth decimal place. So your absolute uncertainty should also be written to fourth decimal places. So that will be 0 0.0003 and that is your first example solved using the first method there is another method of doing this in this method all you have to do is calculate the maximum value of the calculated value and then the normal value and then you have to take a difference of those to find the absolute uncertainty most of the students find this one much easier now 1 over L maximum can be found if you have the minimum value of L because L is in the denominator. The smaller the value of L, the maximum the value of this fraction. So therefore, I'm going to just plug in the values here now. Uh, the uncertainty in 40 was 0 0.5. So 40 minus 0 0.5 will give me the minimum possible value of L. So that is 1 over L maximum. And then 1 over L is simply 1 over 40. And that gives me an answer of 0 0.000. 316. However, we do need to round this off. So this becomes 0 0.0003. And when you write down your final answer, that will be 0 0.0250. And again, the uncertainty will be written like this. So there you go. You use two different methods, but you arrived at the same value of uncertainty in both the methods. Let's look at another example. So you are given a distance and a time, and then you are given a formula for speed you have to calculate v square and then you have to include the absolute uncertainty in v square as well so first let's just go ahead and calculate v square very quickly which will be 
0.050 over 0.086 and then we'll just take the square of that and if you put that in our calculator that will be 0.34 meter square per second square notice how i have uh, taken care of the units and how i have only written the answer to two significant figures something that we learned in the previous video so if you don't know how much how many significant figures to retain in your answer go and watch the previous video in this playlist and you will see the link to that in your description and the top right hand corner as well now how do you find the absolute uncertainty in v square well the first method is pretty straightforward the uncertainty in your answer is the sum of uncertainties in your raw values so we have to first calculate the percentage uncertainties in D and T and then there is something extra that we have to do here. Remember that when you were calculating V, you did not just use D and T, you actually squared their values as well. Whatever is the power of the number that you are using as a raw value, you also have to multiply, by, multiply that number to the percentage uncertainty of that number. So D had a power 2 percentage uncertainty will be multiplied by 2 t also had the power 2 so its percentage uncertainty will also be multiplied by 2 we will plug in the values in this expression delta v square is something that we want to find the value of v square is known to us already then you have 2 and in your brackets you will have the absolute uncertainty of d 0.001 divided by 0 0.050 multiply by 100 plus 2 into 0 0.002 divided by 0 0.086 multiply by 100 now all you have to do is just solve this equation 0 0.02941 However, is this your absolute uncertainty? Is this how you're going to write it? No. First, write down your value of V square, which was 0 0.34. Now, when you write down your absolute uncertainty with it, it should have the same number of decimal places as your answer. So our answer is to two decimal places. We'll round off our absolute uncertainty to two decimal places as well. So that would be 0 0.03 meter square per second square. So that is how you find the answer. Now let's do this same example with the second method as well. Here you just have to calculate the value of v square but you also have to calculate the value of v square maximum and then just take the difference of those and that will land you at the absolute uncertainty in v square. So in order to calculate the maximum value of v square you should have the maximum value of the distance but since the time is in the denominator you should have the minimum value of that that will give you the maximum possible value of v square and then v square which is the regular v square will be calculated in the normal way so just plug in your values there and you will get 0.051 so remember how the the uncertainty in D was 0.001 to add so I added that to D so it became 0.051 time was 0.086 but this will have the minimum possible value so that will become 0.0084 since I subtracted 0.002 from it I'll square these numbers and then I'll just calculate the regular V square and that will give me an answer of 0.03 Zero 06. However, when you write down your final answer, first write down the actual answer, and then when you write your absolute uncertainty with it, it should have the same number of decimal places, which is two decimal places in your answer. So that is the second example done with both methods. Now we will look at examples where you have to solve where you have to calculate a logarithm or a natural logarithm of some quantity and then also include the uncertainty in that so in this example you have a value of resistance which is 580 plus minus 20 ohms you have to calculate the value of ln r and then include the absolute uncertainty let's go ahead and calculate ln r that will be ln 580 and that will be equal to 6. 36 now 
to understand why did I retain only two decimal places in this number go back and watch the previous video because that explains in detail how many significant figures or decimal places you should retain now since we have the answer for ln r now we need to be able to calculate the absolute uncertainty in ln r remember that the first method where you in which involved the percentage uncertainties of the raw value does not work with logarithms the logarithm uncertainty is only found in with the second method which is you just have to calculate the value of ln r maximum and the regular ln r find their difference and that's it that's your absolute uncertainty in the answer find out the biggest possible value of r r is 580 but if you add 20 to it it will become 600 and for regular ln r you just have ln 580 Put that in your calculator and you get 0 0.0339. But when I write down my final answer for LNR, that should be 6.36. It is to two decimal places. So my absolute uncertainty should also be rounded off to two decimal places. Another example for logarithms. Again, we have a resistance 330 plus minus 20 ohms. Now I know I have to calculate ln 1 over r and then include the absolute uncertainty in that so let's just go ahead and calculate ln 1 over r first that will be 1 over 330 and we get minus 5.80 do not worry about the minus sign it is absolutely correct whenever the number inside the log is less than 1 whenever it's a proper fraction you will get a minus answer so don't worry about that now in order to calculate the absolute uncertainty, we again use the same method, calculate the maximum possible value of ln 1 over r and then calculate the regular value of ln 1 over r and then find the difference of those. Now, since r here is in the denominator, you will use the minimum value of r that will give you the maximum value of ln 1 over r. So, ln 1 over 310 should be there since we will subtract the absolute uncertainty from 330 and then ln 1 over 330 and when you calculate this you get 0 0.0625 now when you write down your final answer for ln 1 over r first write down your value which is 5.80 written to two decimal places so my absolute uncertainty will also be written to two decimal places all right so these are all the examples i'll see you in the next ones